Merry Christmas! Welcome to our Christmas service. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're so glad that you could join us from wherever you are to worship and to listen to uh, a sermon on the true meaning of Christmas, the true story of Christmas. Hope that you're doing a, uh, having a great morning so far. Uh, let's let's as we do. Let's take a moment. Let's um, take a moment just to. Uh, prepare our hearts to meet with God and to honor Him and to worship Him, to adore Him. Like the video says, Jesus is the best gift ever. Jesus is the best gift ever. And if He is the best gift, you know, what do we say when somebody gives us a gift? We say thank you. And let's take a moment to say thank you to the Father uh, for the amazing gift of Jesus and the salvation that we can have through Him. So let's take a moment to do that and um, just prepare our hearts for this time of worship and we'll begin our service in that way. Yes, God, thank you. Thank you for this time. We thank you for your love. Thank you for the greatest gift ever that you would come and be Emmanuel, God with us. God, we love you and we worship and adore you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come be with each of us, God, wherever we are uh, joining in for this service. Lord, would you come and touch our hearts, inspire us and move us into a time of worship, thanksgiving, and praise, God. We thank you. We give this time to you. We give our hearts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's recite the Apostles' Creed together as a confession of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from which he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a few Christmas hymns, uh, but let's just make sure, you know, that it's not just a sing-along time, but that we really uh, glorify Him and meditate on who He is and what He has done and really give Him our hearts and give Him our worship in this time. So let's sing this together.
us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ alone. Oh, come, oh, come, let us adore. getting together as a family as great as that is God we want to remember that this time is to celebrate Jesus coming and we want to give you all the glory and, and declare that you alone are worthy God oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining it is
chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name forever his power and glory
Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, you're all together worthy, you're all together Say
and sisters in faith, please help us to love one another in perfect harmony. Father, please help us to see every person the same way that you see them. Help us to love them the way that you love them, even when they don't love us back. Please show us how to walk continually in your love, that perfect love which casts out fear. We love you in this house. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus is the best gift ever. Woohoo! Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to SP uh, Online, our Christmas service. I'm so excited to wish you all such a warm and happy Christmas and know that um, Jesus, the best gift ever, um, has been given to you already. So receive it with all your heart, with so much joy. Embrace his love in this season. And if you're new to our church or you're joining us for the first time, uh, I would really like to help you guys get plugged in. So um, if you can just take a moment to scan the QR code on the screen, um, it will lead you to a con connections card. Just fill it in and we will stay connected with you. Now I'm going to run us through some announcements so then you guys will know what's going on in our church. Christmas outreach. In light of recent social distancing measures, some of our NGO partners have canceled their Christmas outreaches. However, there are still many opportunities to spread God's love and joy to those around us. We encourage you to reach out to your neighbors. This includes the homeless, the elderly, street cleaners, marginalized colleagues, security guards, building cleaners, and more. You can bless them with Christmas messages, edible goods, masks, and sanitizers. On your screens are eight examples of how you can get involved in Christmas outreach. Um, if you have any questions or need guidance, feel free to contact the outreach team at outreach at sphk.org. For the upcoming public holidays, December 25th and 26th, the church office will be closed. Please note, for these two days, EMP will go on break and will resume on December 29th. This year's New Year's Eve service will be online. We invite you to join us in your homes on December 31st. Tune into the live stream via YouTube or the SP website. The service will start at 10.30 p.m. We will enter into the new year with worship, word, and prayer. Ladies, mark your calendars for our first 2021 Oasis session on January 2nd. We will meet from 3 to 4.30 p.m. The women's ministry have prepared a video for us to watch. Hello, SP. This is Grace here. I'm going to share about my first visit to Oasis. So one day I was listening to EMP and I heard P. Sam said, let's pray for Oasis. Then I thought, hmm, Oasis. Oh yes, I can join now because I have no more work on Saturday. I also want to see how other women are doing during this time. On that day, a sister shared a testimony of how she overcame darkness and is now walking in freedom. It was so powerful because I felt she really demonstrated how she triumphed over the enemies by putting them in public display and giving glory to God. Sometimes I forgot how powerful a testimony can be. By seeing and hearing what God is doing in other people's lives and how they won their battles impart faith and courage. After that, we had small group discussion and we prayed for one another. It was a powerful time. Register before December 30th on the SP website and email us with any questions at women at sphk.org. Come and join us to kickstart the year. Helping Without Hurting is a discipleship course led by the Outreach Ministry. The course is designed to lead those who desire to help others without hurting themselves or the ones they are trying to help. It has a focus towards the poor. 
The six-week course will start on Sunday, January 3rd at 2 p.m. The cost will be $200. Please note this will be an online course and GIC is a prerequisite. Find out more info and sign up via the SP website. Now, if you're watching from YouTube, we have added all the links related to our announcements in the video description below. Or you can go to SPH, uh, sphk.org slash online to find out all of today's service items. Now it's offering time. Let's prepare our hearts to give to the Lord. Please refer to the slide on, on your screen for details on how to give. Today, Conrad from Old Peak Road House Church will be praying for the offering. Olivia and Abby will share a song with us. Good morning, SP. Let's bow our heads and pray. 1 Corinthians 29, 14. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. And so, Lord God, uh, may our offerings just be an act of worship and just a small evidence, Lord God, the of the faithfulness that you've provided for us, not only monetarily, but even our own breath, Lord God, and um, everything, Lord God, uh, is, is from you. Um, so we just praise you and give you all the glory. We just invite you, Holy Spirit, into each and every house, and uh, mm. we just surrender our hearts to you so we can hear your word. Um, and we just pray over uh, peace Sam as he delivers the message, Lord God, and may your words uh, just fall on good soil. Um, we love you and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you so much, Olivia and Abby. That was beautiful. Hi, SP. I'm just here to make one special announcement. Christmas is a time of giving, and I want to let you know of a special giving opportunity that we have through a company called Aloe's Tree. Aloe's Tree is the company that has provided our church with a nanowave photo catalyst spray service. This is something um, that it's one of the methods of protecting surfaces against the coronavirus. Similar sprays have been used all over Hong Kong as well as the MTR and Hong Kong public buses. Aloe's Tree is partnering with Christian Action to provide their services to the many subdivided apartments in Hong Kong. And they're looking for people who can sponsor this project. They're calling it Project Micah, based on Micah chapter 6, verse 8. As an added service, when you sponsor the spraying of these subdivided apartments, Aloe's Tree will match your order by blessing you with a free spray for your home or facility with the equal square footage as the package you choose to sponsor. So if you look at the screen, you can see the packages listed on there. There are four packages to choose from. So if I can just explain, package A is for 10 subdivided units with the equivalent square footage of 1,000 square feet. Discounted price of $1,900. This means if you sponsor this package, 10 homes will receive this spray for free and up to 1,000 square feet of your own home or facility will receive the spray. So depending on how big your home is, you need to choose the right package if you want your entire home sprayed through this sponsorship as well. Okay, all the information can be found on our website and you will see a link there to the Aloe's Tree website where you can sign up for this sponsorship. And you can also send me an email if you have any questions. It's something small that we can do to bless our city. So I hope many of us can sign up. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Nate. And thank you, girls. Uh, it's good to know that the future of SP worship is in very, very good hands. Um, before I get into uh, the message, first of all, Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope that you're enjoying a, a wonderful uh, Sabbath day already. Uh, before we get into the word, um, I just uh, want to just show a video. This is from one of our ministry partners. Um, it's called Care for Children. Uh, they're a UK based charity that primarily does their work in Asia, in China, and now in Vietnam and Cambodia and some other countries, Thailand. And so uh, Robert Glover, who's uh, spoken at SP before, he, he sent us uh, this gift of a video. And so please take a look. Greetings to all my friends in Hong Kong, especially Solomon's Porch. Uh, from a cold winter's day in Saxel, Norfolk, England, we forecast snow tonight, so it's really cold here and I would just love to be with you in that warm, beautiful place, Hong Kong. Thank you so much, Pastor Sam, and all of you for supporting us at Care for Children. We've seen remarkable breakthroughs this year with so many children going back into families. And as we move towards Christmas, it's my birthday today, the 3rd of December. Uh, that's why I know we're moving closer to Christmas Day. Um, I just want to celebrate with you that we have impacted children's lives. There will be children that will have a family this Christmas because of you guys. And I want to thank you for that. And uh, uh, because that's so important. When Jesus was born, he was born in a manger. He had his mother and his father and people came around and gathered around. It was family, it was community. And that's what's important to children that children's lives have the opportunity of having mums and dads, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters, and that wider community. So thank you, Solomon's Porch, for making such a difference to so many children's lives this Christmas. Amen. Wonderful video. Care for Children uh, is responsible for over a million children now out of institutional care and into families and it's incredible ministry and and thank you for robert for sharing that with us 
Um, uh, think, uh, speaking of Christmas and babies, uh, we have another baby that's joined us. Um, it's a little late in announcement, but on October 24th in 2020, uh, Angela and Josh have welcomed in a new little baby girl. You can see the pictures up there. Uh, this is uh, Raina Lee Chen. And so huge congratulations uh, to Josh and Angela. Uh, bless you guys. And if you uh, do see them or text them and just say congrats uh, to them. All right. Uh, the rest of us, let's turn our Bibles now to Luke chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 8 to 14. So Luke chapter 2, 8 to 14. I think the words will be up on your uh, screens in a moment. So let's read this really beautiful chunk of scripture. Luke chapter 2, 8 through 14. And in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men, with whom he is pleased. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you, God, uh, today. We thank you for this Christmas season, this holiday. Uh, not only that kids have time off from school, Lord, some of us will have time off from work, Lord, but it really it's about your son. It's about Jesus. Lord, this baby came into the world and brought hope and joy and life and forgiveness. And we come, God, on this Sunday to remember and to celebrate that fact, God. And so we thank you, Lord. And we ask you to speak to us through your word. Uh, to that end, would you release the revelatory ministry of the Holy Spirit in this room and all the rooms. Lord, give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive what the Spirit is saying to each one of us individually and corporately as a body. Lord, I humble myself today. I ask that you use me to preach a prophetic word with power and authority. Help me, Lord, not just convey your words, God, but convey your heart. God, we thank you, Lord. We love you in our homes, Lord God, and in this place. And in Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Um, when Pope Julius I, when he authorized December 25th to be celebrated as the birthday of Jesus in A.D. 353, who would have ever thought that it would become what it is today? When Professor Charles Follin lit candles on the first Christmas tree in America in 1832, who would have ever thought that the decorations would become as elaborate as they are today. Even on our stage, you can see two trees behind me. There's actually another tree hiding. And so we, uh, the stage turned to a forest overnight. Um, but, I mean, who would ever thought that it would become what it is today? Think about this. Even before that, when the Magi brought forth their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, uh, who would ever thought that gifts would be the primary reason people celebrate Christmas? And even, uh, I mean, we're dealing with this uh, we, even with our own kids. Um, uh, Andrew, my little son, is so concerned uh, with what he's going to receive for Christmas. And so we constantly have to try to teach him what Christmas really means. Um, it's been a long time since 1832, longer still from 353, and even longer still 2,000 years ago from that dark night that was brightened by this beautiful, beautiful, special star. It was a night in which our King Jesus was born. Yet, as we approach Christmas again here in 2020, it gives us another opportunity to pause in the midst of all the excitement. And, and it is an exciting time. Presents and food and all, trust me, it's an exciting time. But it gives us a time to pause in the midst of presents and decorations and, and really the commercialization of it all that surround Christmas today. And it's consider, again, the event of Christmas, what this day really means, and the person in whom we celebrate. So if you're around somebody, or if not, then you can 
right on the, on the uh, chat there and just say simply say, hey, good looking, Jesus is the reason for the season. Go ahead. I want you to turn to somebody right on the board for us. Jesus is the reason for this season. See, the, the Christmas message is really uh, about a hope. It's a hope that uh, for a ruined humanity, it's a hope of pardon, it's a hope of peace with God, it's a hope of glory because at the Father's will, Jesus Christ became poor and he came into the world, born in a stable, that 30 years later he might die on the cross. The Christmas message is the birth, but also the death and resurrection of Christ. It's the darkness where the star, where the, uh, star shines, but it's also the darkness that covers the earth where hope is born. Um, I, I always, I don't, I don't know why, but I always go back to a cartoon uh, that I saw as a little boy when I think about Christmas. And almost every Christmas, I bust out now, it used to be on VHS, now it's on DVD. Now you could actually just go online uh, on YouTube. Um, but I watch uh, uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas. And uh, I, I loved, I, I, don't know, I just love this, uh, this little clip from there. It's only a few minutes long. Um, hopefully it doesn't get, we don't get shut down here, uh, but Pastor Ken, can you show this little clip, please? You've been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. <laughs> what a treat! I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Amen. I love Linus. If you, if you get a chance to watch this, and hopefully, you know, it's a great idea. Get your kids together. Uh, watch uh, uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas. And uh, it's just Charlie Brown being very confused about what Christmas is. He's, been in, he's in charge of the Christmas play, and so he bought this tree, and um, he thinks it's a wonderful tree, but everyone else hates the tree, and uh, um, it's kind of wrapped into that. And he's wondering, what is Christmas all about? Is it about the tree? Is it about this play? Uh, what, what's this whole thing all about? And then Linus comes to the rescue, and he says that Christmas is about Jesus. It's about Jesus the Christ. It's about the person of Christ. And it's about a God who loves us so much that he sent his son to come into the world. And it's fitting that he comes into the world as a baby. So what's the, what is the meaning of Christmas? I just have a few points, and I'm going to run through the first two quite quickly, but the last one, I want to park there for a little bit. What's the meaning of Christmas? Number one, it means that we can be forgiven. Every single one of us, we can be forgiven. Brothers and sisters, let's not fool ourselves. This is our greatest need. 
Uh, not long before she died in 1988, uh, in a moment of surprising candor on television, uh, Marganita Lasky, she was one of the best-known secular humanists and novelists. She said this on live television. She said, what I envy most about you Christians is your forgiveness. I have nobody to forgive me. He says, what I envy most about you Christians is your forgiveness. I have nobody to forgive me. Acts 13, 38 says, Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. There's the power of forgiveness. Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Forgiveness, I forgive you. Those words are so powerful. I can remember uh, in my relationship with my wife, Lisa, there'll be many times that, of course, you know, me being a human being, uh, I do stupid things, and, and unfortunately, I hurt her in some way. And I come to the, the grips and realization of what I've done and just feeling horrible and just feeling, uh, I mean, just gut-wrenching in the way that I hurt my wife. And, uh, and for me to, to not only express my sorrow and my grief, but ask her the, 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 the $10 million question, which is, honey, can you forgive me? And then for her to turn around and just say, yes, I forgive you. And just the weight and, and, and just the heaviness just come, come off of us. Brothers and sisters, you've got to recognize that we are carrying this heaviness with us. And, and every single one of us, our greatest need is for forgiveness. And so as a family, we've learned, of course, we say I'm sorry in those things, uh, but we learn to actually use biblical terminology. In other words, the issue is forgiveness. Not only am I sorry, but will you forgive me? And, and we've seen it in our lives and people around when the, uh, the response, the affirmative response, yes, I forgive you, and something powerful begins to happen. That's what happened. That's our salvation story, every single one of us. We, we realized our sin, and we realized what we had done uh, uh, unto the Lord, and, and we felt horrible about it, and we turned to our Savior, and we said, Lord, can you forgive me? And Jesus stretched out his arms and says, yes, I forgive you. Um, I've read this before many times, but I, I love this quote. And he says, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need was pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent to us a Savior, Christ the Lord. Because Jesus was born in a manger thousands of years ago, we can be forgiven. You can be free today. All you have to do is go before the Lord and just say, Lord, can you forgive me? And he will offer up that forgiveness for you. Number two, what is the meaning of Christmas? What does it mean for us? It means that we can focus on what we have instead of what we don't have. We can focus on what we have instead of what we don't have. Especially in light of Christmas. I know that we're, um, we ask the kids every year, uh, because my wife and I, we, we don't, we don't want to guess about uh, these things. You know, we have four kids, and so that's a, uh, a bit of time shopping and thinking about things. We just ask them, simply give us a Christmas list. And uh, um, it's crazy. You should see some of my kids' lists, you know, some of them, some of them, you know, some of them get, get a little long. And, and, uh, um, but it's, it, it, we can get so focused on what we want and, and what we don't have and I need this and I need that. And, I mean, that, that's, that's all good in all. But let's not lose our focus in that way. 
let's focus instead of the treasures that we do have. You know, Christmas, unfortunately, has become about what we want or what we need. And, and then even, even giving in this way, instead of really taking the time to focus on what we already have. Um, many years ago, uh, we got to spend Christmas. I know I've been thinking about this because, you know, there's no traveling. And we're actually meant to be in Niseko this week um, at our lead pastor's retreat. Um, and enjoying the snow. So I was thinking about the last time, um, you know, with our kids, uh, we've seen snow or a while back. I remember years ago, we went back to, we went to Colorado and visited with my family and had a wonderful time. Uh, went up to the mountains uh, and um, snowball fights and sledding and, and all these things. And this is only when we had uh, Elise and Emma at this time. And I remember flying back home, we got on the plane to come back to Hong Kong and, you know, on Cathay flights, you know what you do is you, you, you walk in, but you have to walk in and you walk in through the business class seats. And so we walked in and uh, I remember Elise, and she must have been only about maybe like four years old or three years old or something. Uh, uh, Elise walks in and she looks at these big seats and she goes, I want to sit there. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, oh, sorry, sweetie, we, we can't really sit there. Our seats are over here. And he goes, no, I want to sit here. And, uh, and so we kind of, because we actually, uh, on the way there, uh, by the grace of God and because of my airline miles, and we were able to sit in business, and, but, but she was fixated on it. No, I want to sit here. And so we went back, and we, and we had to, you know, have this conversation uh, with her. And, 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 and it, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy to focus on what we want. And then when we're presented with situations uh, it's so fo- easy to focus on what you don't have. And we don't have this nice big seat for us. Incidentally, on that trip, um, I actually, the airline uh, uh, upgraded me. Uh, and so I could have sat there by myself. Um, but all the husbands know, don't do that. <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually did it once uh, years ago. And I, I was actually a little sick. And so Lisa had the four kids in the back. And, uh, and so she said, oh, go ahead, take it. You know, the airline offered me a free upgrade. So I went in, and I've never heard the end of it. And so, so, so don't, don't do that, okay? Um, and, but but it's, it's, it's so easy for us to just kind of focus on what we don't have. Uh, we look out, and we're, maybe we go shopping, and all these different things happen. And, and it could, it, it, it could be, become so materialistic. Uh, but Christmas is really a time to focus on what we do have already. What, what, do we, what do we have? We have a loving God. We have a faithful Father. We have a wonderful church that we can call home and call a family, especially even for us, a family away from our earthly family. And on top of that, we have family. We have, I, I have a incredible wife. I have four incredible, incredible children uh, that I love with all of my heart. And uh, uh, I've got a, a dad in, in Korea who, uh, thank God, is safe. Uh, he's very high risk for coronavirus, um, but he's safe even though the country in, in, in Daegu is being locked down. Um, we have family in the States and, and other places of the world. Uh, and um, what a blessing for that. Uh, I have a, a job here. I'm actually doing my job right now. Uh, God's given me a career and a real purpose in my life. This is, this is what we do have. I have pretty decent health. I mean, my joints are, are kind of falling apart here and there. But no complaints uh, for me. I'm still able to play ball. In fact, I, I played yesterday morning for a little bit of time. Don't ask me where, okay, but I, I played a little bit. Um, but, uh, I mean, isn't that wonderful? We have friends, uh, so many wonderful, wonderful friends. And even, you know, here in our church, uh, so many wonderful, wonderful friends that God has given us in our lives. And, and over these uh, uh, 19 years almost, uh, now as the church, we've got friends all over the world. Uh, what an incredible, incredible blessing. And we have purpose. And, of course, we have our salvation. And in Christ, we have everything. And because of that, 
We don't need to be in want. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need to play this materialistic game that's played in the world. And uh, we can focus on what we do have. Because Jesus came into the world 2,000 years ago, He gives and He gave us life. And he gives us a different reason to live. A different reason to go about uh, throughout our whole life. It gives us time to focus on what we do have. The last one, number three, like I said, I'm going to park here uh, for a little bit because what is the meaning of Christmas? It means that we can have real hope. Real hope. Not, not, not the worldly kind of hope. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And during this incredibly tumultuous year, I think most people would say 2020 has probably been one of the most difficult years that people have, have ever had in their lives. And during this incredibly difficult year, we can hold on to something that happened and that also will happen in our lives. Christmas means that 2,000 years ago, God sent His Son into a dying, restless world in need of help and in need of of hope. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Say living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have a living hope. It lives inside of us. It's got life inside of us because of what Jesus Christ has done. Because of what the Father has done in sending us His Son by His great mercy. I love this passage in 1 Peter chapter 1. Down, down a little bit later in verse 13, now he talks about this Christian hope that we have. Very different than the hope that's in the world. And in 1 Peter 1.13, he says, Therefore, Prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope, this living hope that's inside of us, completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word prepare that's used here in Greek, uh, is a term that's describing physical preparation. Other translations, they may translate as alert, but really the prepare is better. It, it literally means to gird up. And, and this word actually is a metaphor derived from the practice of the, of the near ancient East back in those days, who in order to be unimpeded by their movements, uh, were accustomed when starting on a journey or engaging in any work to basically bind their long flowing garments closely around their bodies and fasten them uh, with a leather belt. Uh, you can think of this as being like soldiers that go off into battle or an athlete uh, that prepares for competition. It, we prepare ourselves for something. I, I know for me, when I play basketball, I, I almost always, almost always, always play with a singlet. I, I, I play uh, with a tank top because I, I don't want anything touching my shoulders, anything that would get in the way of impeding my, my shot. And, and so that, that's just what I do. I, I prepare myself for, well, we can't really say battle, but for competition in this way. And I do that by the clothes that I wear. Of course, I don't, I don't you know, carry my, self, my mobile phone in my pocket or keys uh, in my pocket while I'm playing because I, I get myself ready. I gird up in this way. And, and that's what this word means. And you can imagine Peter, when he's writing this, the imagery that he's using, the word in the imagery, goes all the way back to John chapter 21. When the, remember it says the revelation, when he sees Jesus, and what did he do? He puts on his garment and he girds himself. That's the word, he girds himself, and he jumps in and goes to meet with Jesus. It's the same idea. It's the same word. And, it, and what it does and it invites the early followers of Jesus to take the same action 
toward the hope that they have in Christ Jesus. Interesting enough, some linguists uh, um, you, uh, that have studied this suggest that the word hope uh, shares um, um, uh, etymological root with the word hop. Isn't that interesting? And so the word hope came from hop. Uh, really what it's conveying, it, it's conveying that to hope for something is to leap into expectation, to hope towards a possibility. See, in, in our day and time, unfortunately, the idea of hope is now just primarily connected with passivity. And it's away from really the action-oriented nature of what this word really means. In other words, we, we've been sitting at home and we hope that the cases go down. So we can go out to eat and we can go play basketball and go to the gym and do all these things. We hope that a vaccine can come quickly. We hope that, I hope the lines are not too long. Uh, we, 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 we hope that it won't be too cold outside today so we can go out and go for a walk. Uh, we hope that we can travel again soon. We hope that everything will work out. Today, hope is more like wishing. It's more wishful thinking more than anything else. But Christian hope is not wishful thinking. Christian hope is an expectant leap forward. It's, you think about it, it's a step-by-step. Step. We're, we're walking towards, so it's not us sitting passively and saying, well, I hope it'll be a nice day tomorrow. You know, I, I hope, it's not passive. Christian hope is active. He says, prepare your mind for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I love uh, Eugene Peterson's version. In the message, this is how Peterson translates uh, what we just read, verse 13. He says, So roll up your sleeves, put your mind in gear, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. That's Christian hope. It's rolling up our sleeves and it's getting to work. It's a willingness to get our hands dirty, to labor and toil our way toward expectation and promise. See, it's so different from the world's idea of hope. The world's idea, again, is just wishful thinking. But Christian hope is shaped by resilience and fortitude. Christian hope does not shy away from suffering and pain. I, ha I had this um, amazing experience uh, just recently, and I got, I got invited to um, a house church. And, um, and when I went, uh, and worship leader was singing so passionately, and there was a couple that were there, and they had just had a miscarriage. And, um, and in, you know, in the midst of this, um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I knew, I knew uh, what had happened, and, and I, just, I just watched them as they worshiped the Lord. And uh, just obviously with tears ringing down their face and just this adoration and this love for God, even in the midst of their difficulty. That's the Christian hope. It's rolling up our sleeves. It's not wishful thinking. It's not, well, I hope things get better or I hope I'll feel better tomorrow. No, it's this firm foundation. It's this belief in Christ. It's, it's, it's this work that God does in our lives that allows us, even though painfully, to take one step after another after another. Christian hope, like I said, does not shy away from suffering and pain. I love what Tim Keller says about this. And this is what Keller says. He says, while other worldviews lead us to sit in the midst of life's joys, foreseeing the coming sorrows, Christianity empowers its people to sit in the midst of this world's sorrows, tasting the coming joy. It's a totally different way. We're not, we're not just hoping, wishful thinking that things will get better. In the midst of the time, we know they're going to get better. 
because we know that Jesus is coming back for us. In this most difficult year, we have hope, not in a vaccine, but we have hope in a God who is coming back for us. See, Christian hope does not ignore fear, anxiety, and doubt. It actually confronts them. It holds steady, clinging to peace in the midst of chaos. It's so different. It's so different. I remember many, many Novembers before. I remember November 21st. Uh, this was 1993. And I remember that date so well because, because that's not only the month that I started uh, becoming a pastor and that, that job would actually, I mean, really change my whole life, but it was also the day that my grandmother passed away. I remember coming home from church and, and this, this, my new staff that I just joined this church took me out for my birthday uh, dinner. I came home uh, at night to an empty house. I was living at my aunt's house during that time because my parents had gone to the mission field. Uh, and then my cousin calls me and tells me that uh, my grandmother had died. And I remember calling my pastor at the time and, and he says, you know, let's meet. Why don't we meet together for morning prayer the next morning, uh, which was Monday morning. And so I was driving uh, in my truck. I was going over a hill, um, uh, uh, the back roads to get to church. And I remember looking up into the heavens and had my sunroof open and shaking my fist at God and said, God, how can you do this? And I just, I just heard this whisper. And it says, this is why I died. And I didn't quite understand it. And I was still shaking my fist at God. And I hear just the simple word, son, this is why I died. And right then, it was revelation. And I realized, oh, this is what the cross is all about. Jesus died so my grandmother would never die. Jesus died so that I could see her again. That's our hope. Even in the midst of of suffering and a lot of people this year have suffered suffered economically uh, suffered uh, uh, mental health wise and uh, uh, suffered in their health and and all sorts of different things that are happening all over this world and in that way we have a hope a living hope that conquers through any suffering and any pain that we may go through as we close this season of Advent Advent, interesting enough, you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know this already, but if you don't, Advent comes from the Latin word Aventus, and it literally means arrival. And so what we're talking about is we're talking about the arrival. It's a baby that's been born to take away the sins of the world and give us a true, real hope. Advent also reminds us of how the story ends. See, there are two arrivals here. The first is the Lord comes as a baby. The second is the Lord comes as a man and a deliverer. He's coming back, brothers and sisters. We can face anything. We can have true Christian hope. And, and we can face everything with resilience, with fortitude, with patience and faith because he's coming back. Christmas is not just about the nativity story with Jesus as a baby. Brothers and sisters, that baby grew up. <laughs> he grew up to be a man. He died on the cross for us and he ascended into heaven and he's coming back for us he's coming back and so that's why we can face anything in this world 2021 maybe even a worse year but we can face it as followers of christ and we can have a living hope because we know the end of the story he's conquered the world he's conquered the devil and he's coming back for us i think paul said it best in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, he says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is revealed to us. 
th- think about this. Think about all that we went through this year. It, it's it, it's com- compared to what God has in store for us. He says this is not worthy. It's not even on the same level. It's not even in the same zip code, same planet. He says this kind of stuff, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's to be revealed to us. And so speaking about hope, in a few verses later in 24 and 25, he reminds us again, so he says, For in hope we have been saved. But hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. With perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. Christmas is about a baby being born to take away the sins of the world. But Christmas is also about this baby grew up and he lived this perfect life and he died for our sins so that we can be forgiven. And he's gone to the Father but he's coming back. He's prepared rooms for us in his Father's house. He's coming back. This is why we can have hope. And I, my prayer for you in this Christmas season is that no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, that Christ can fill you with his hope, can fill you with his love. It's interesting, Donald read it, the verse in the beginning, and so I'll close with the same verse. In John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, for God so loved you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, his precious little baby, brought into the world, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life we can be forgiven because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Brothers and sisters, God loves you. God loves you so much. He loves who you are. He wants to bless your life. And He wants to fill your life with hope. Real hope. Not wishful thinking, but the living hope of God. And as we sing together as an anthem of our praise, uh, why don't we get out of our seats or whatever and, and let's stand to our feet and let's sing about this glorious Christ that God has so graciously given to us.
believes will not perish they shall have eternal life let me quote Linus again and the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold I bring you good news of a great joy that shall be for all the people for today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord let's pray together this is good news friends Christ the Lord has been born. Maybe you're home right now and maybe you've never heard anything like that before. And maybe there's something inside of you that says, you know what, I'm longing for forgiveness as well. I could use some real hope, not wishful thinking, but real hope. Would you invite the Lord into your life? Will you open up your heart and say what people have said through generations? God, can you forgive me? And if that's where you're at, I want you to just write something on the chat. And one of our staff will reach out to you. But we're going to pray right now. And just simply ask the Lord to enter in. And I want you to have that conversation with Him right now. And the conversation goes something like this. And you can follow along with me. Or you can pray your own prayer. Let's say, Lord Jesus... I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you came to this earth to die for my sins. And I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I'm inviting you into my life, into my heart. Come and change me, Lord. Thank you. And in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer today, I want you to tell somebody or write a message there, and we want to connect with you and tell you more about this amazing life, this journey that you've started. Let's pray together. Let me pray and get benediction. Lord, we thank you for the living hope. We thank you, God, that you sent your Son thousands of years before to this earth in the darkness in a manger to be born of man to live the life that we live to suffer with us and to die for our sins but also Lord he's resurrected and now sits at your right hand and he comes again he will come again and that's the source of our hope. That's what keeps us going. That's what prepares us. We get ready for battle. We gird ourselves up. It's a real hope. And I pray that you would continue to fill us with it, God. We thank you, Lord. We love you. We bless you. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord causes His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace, shalom, from this day forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I bless you to really, really enjoy this Christmas season. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the trees. It's not about the food. Even though all those things are wonderful, it's about Jesus. Remember that. God bless. If you need prayer for anything, go into one of our rooms and one of our well ministers will gladly pray for you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas week this week. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.